everyone welcome to treasures and trinkets by lindsay creates gifts as always i am lindsay and my bead box came it's time to open the bargain bead box with you and um, it's the march bargain bead box it's incredible value and even though i moan about getting it later than everybody else i actually since my first box i haven't got it much later than anyone else in all honesty it's been about a week and that's not a lot like considering i'm all the way out in the uk and it could take much longer to get here like i'm quite lucky so let's open the box okay so to start with here we go the bargain bead box celtic inspirations your beads Rich greens and sparkling teal combine with silver findings in this Celtic collection. Lovely. I do love a bit of silver. Uh, highlights include green, advent green adventuring teardrops and carved leaves, a pair of half matte agate focal beads and an array of high quality silver for tone findings. Celtic motifs include the triquector, often representing spirituality, unity and eternity, and the dara knot typically used to represent strength, like the roots of an oak tree. We hope you enjoy designing with these timeless symbols. Um, also, adventuring is good for these trying times that we're in at the moment because it, it helps you, it's, it's positive influence, or it's supposed to be positive influence. So, let's get in and have a look. It's also, if we go to the back, we have our identification here. Our value this month is $63. It is uh, $18.95. I think it works out about £15.65, or it works out about the same somehow in pounds as it does in dollars. Um, but yes, I will use this and let's get into it. Here's our lovely bag. You can see we're representing the greens already. Let's sort this out and come back and I'll be right with you. Here we are then. I am back. I have got my bags in order and let's start going through it together. Our first bag is two pieces of approximately 18 by 13 green adventuring teardrop pendants and these are, are smaller than I was expecting but they're lovely they've got a lovely amount of detail in them you can sort of see some inclusions in there let's see if I can get in close like I like to do can we see some inclusions in there no, it's a very odd light about today. I'm not going to be able to get it, but they are very nice. That is those. Number one. Number two is 20 pieces of 7x5mm 3 petal bead cap. And these are nice. These remind me of um, maybe a three leaf clover they're nice and lightweight very delicate and they're filigree as well which is nice they are very can't wait to find a use for those ones number three is four pieces of 18 by 15 millimeter celtic knot flat round charms and i'm going to pop these have got a nice little weight to them they're not too too weighty but they've got a very nice weight they're solid and double-sided they're lovely i like those i might have to see if i can incorporate that in today see what we see if we can make something at the end or what we make at the end number four we have two pieces of 24 by 17 millimeter knot work charms and those are gorgeous those are really nice i really might have to use those i wonder hmm. 
and um, my, my, my mind's ticking already for the end of the video but those are lovely I really like those number five is our 14 inch strand of six millimeter green agate round beads these are dyed and heat treated but they are lovely they're like a kind of like a milky green some of them and you have you can see some inclusions from the agate like they're very nice let's do my zoomy zoom see what we get see what I mean? they're very milky and they're very nice i really like this lovely the, they i love the different tones that they're not all one tone and some of them are banded lovely can't wait to use those let's put that uh, all there, and we can see it. Uh, next, we have number six, which is ten piece strand of thirteen by no thirteen and a half millimeter crystal disco fusted round beads in blue green, and these are stunning. Those they they're almost, it's almost like they glow. They are insane. I really like them. Oh, I feel something coming on with these. Look at the colours. That's amazing. I don't even feel like I need to zoom in, but I'm going to see what happens if you zoom in. They're just gorgeous. I'm impressed. I'm very pleased with those. And it, I, I love the way they go with the greens, but in a different way. They don't, they don't go in my... to go with throwing my head today, but those... I love the glow there. I'm impressed. I really like those. Amazing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Next. One metre of uh, five by three millimetre, by three and a half, sorry, millimetre textured steel jewellery chain. Nickel free and lead, lead free. This is very pretty and I really like the feel of this. And I'm really glad because I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, I finally put an order in for the sister site, but I'll tell you more about that after. I have ordered two more meters of this. I really, I like, you know, I've just, just noticed I have ordered two meters of this from the sister site. I really like that. It's always nice to have some different chains around. Pop that there. Next we have, what are we on? Number eight. And these are 50 pieces of five and a half millimeter sword rope spacer beads again nickel free and ledge free and they're very pretty very dainty these might play into my idea because i am thinking oh my drop room i am the cogs are turning as we're going i'm thinking i'm thinking <laughs> Uh, that one. Number nine is two pieces of 31 by 27 millimeter Celtic knot donut with a loop. So I did get that right, didn't I? Number nine, yeah, with a with a loop. So I'm guessing that's that loop. But they're very pretty. Uh, one sided, which is fine. I can. I, I like one sided. I can deal. That'd be a nice pendant with something. Hmm. I'm thinking. I like those though. I really like those. I like trying to think of maybe using it for something else as well, like trying to use it for some bead embroidery or maybe stick it in some, cut the loops off, stick it in some clay and use it that way. Hmm. I shall toy. I shall play. Next, we have number 10. This is a 16 inch of generous strand, 16 inch strand of six by four millimeter crystal rondelle beads in teal green champagne. And again, these are just stunning. It's almost like they're glowing again. Oh, wow. They're beautiful. I, they, I would say they were more on the blue side, but I'm, I'm still definitely gonna find use for these. They're amazing. Let's do my zoomy zoom, zoomy zoom. 
And there you go. What oh, that gorgeousness. Wow. Lovely. Again, I'm impressed. Has anyone else noticed it seems to be the sparkly things that impress me? <laughs> like a magpie, honestly. <laughs> Next we have five piece strand of approximately 12 millimeter hand carved green aventurine leaf beads. And these are so cute and so pretty. Wow, look how cute they are. Look at those. I really like those. I'm feeling, you know what? I was just feeling, I'd like these. Like I'd like three for a breed and jewelry project, which would leave me two for maybe earrings. And that's perfect because I have three of the same shade and two of the same shade. So that works out grand for me. Hmm, watch this space. Again, I'm very impressed with this. I'm gonna put those back in the bag so we're not there. I feel like I'll be able to differentiate the others. Why would that do? Right, next. No, but that wasn't even number 10. I haven't put it in the wrong bag. Do, 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 do. Next is number 12, which is eight pieces of 18 and a half by 15 and a half Dara Knot Drops links. And they're cute. I really like them. I really like all of this. I'm a big Celtic fan. Obviously, well, I suppose not obviously, but I am a very big Celtic legend and lore and just general Celtic history fan. So, and Celtic, 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 I don't know, someone's going to tell me off. <laughs> there we go, that's those. Mind is still working. Number 13 is nine piece strand of 10 millimeter green adventuring round beads. And again, they're a nice milky color. I like liking the milky adventuring colours we're getting. And I'm liking the inclusions in there. There is a lot more detail when you look closely, which is what I like. I like studying the beads and looking at them, noticing the inclusions and including those in my work. And now we have four sets. Uh, number 14, this is four sets of 16 by 21 millimeter ornate toggle clasps. And I did just buy loads of toggle clasps, but I'll take more. I love some toggle clasps lately. I've only just, these are tiny. Wow, I struggle with the toggle clasps sometimes. Sausage fingers, I think. Well, sometimes it seems to, but they're very nice. They finish off a necklace or a bracelet beautifully. And maybe even I've got some tiny glass gems on the way and some jeweler's glue. I put some gems in there, I think. And maybe if they're small enough, they might just be small enough to go in there as well. Lovely. But that's not arrived yet, or the jeweler's glue hasn't anyway. That's what I'm waiting on to do my video, the yeah, Express one. Right, this one is number 15, and it is a 30 by 20 millimeter green adventuring teardrop focal. And I'm happy that this is flat back because now I'm thinking I'm going to be using this with my bead embroidery. I'm going to be using this and three of these because these are the shade that I want. Watch this space, guys. I've got some interesting ideas coming up. But this, the, the bead embroidery won't be on today's. Right. Right then. Next up, we have this number 16. This is a seven inch strand of eight millimeter faceted English cut candy jade beads. These are dyed. So this leads me to the, the way they've hyphenated jade makes me think they are imitation jade but that's lovely. You might notice the sounds changed a little bit and that's because it has. I forgot to put my mic back on. I clipped it too far away from myself and I killed the sound again, didn't I? So I'm blathering on here um, and I'm blathering now on the record, but the rest of this video will be voiced over um, because 
I for, like a dummy forgot to put the mic back on. It's still something I'm getting used to. So that was the seven inch strand of English cut candy K, candy jade beads dyed. Um, I do love the English cut look. It's nice and chunky. It's something different while still being sparkly and we know I like my sparkles. So let's move on. I timed that all right. That wasn't too bad. So next we have it's two pieces of approximately 24 by 27 millimeter half matte green agate coin beads. These are dyed and heat treated. Um, the heat treated just means that it lasts a little bit longer. Um, the the color lasts a little bit longer, and they're more. They tend to be more durable when they're heat treated as well. Um, here I just gave them a bit of a shine up so we could see them a bit better. And I'm trying to tell you that I can see inclusions and you can just about see it in the video but it's a little bit disappointing that you can't quite see the dark the, 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 the black vein running through but you, you would have been able to see it had I'm trying to show you there you would have been, you would be able to see it in person but for some reason it was coming up very dark and you, you couldn't really see the inclusion that well but it was lovely oh, there you go I'm trying to point it out you can see it I can just about see it but I'm, I'm saying I might um, use these for some bead embroidery as well I'm, I'm really liking bead embroidery at the moment I'm getting lots of ideas for bead embroidery or even using it as a pendant for something I, I, I had so many ideas running through my head at this point I don't know what I was talking to you about blathering this is a 7 inch strand of 8 by 6 millimeter crystal rondelle beads in metallic green iris and again like I'm trying to explain how the sparkly and just beautiful these beads are they're kind of an olivine color in person I don't know if that shows through here but they are so gorgeous the sparkle is just out of this world they were just beautiful and um, so much so that you will see what we did with them. Mohaha. <laughs> they are lovely. And last but not least is bag number 19. And that is a two pieces of that is sorry, two pieces of 29.5mm triquetra pendants. And these are very pretty. Again, I was thinking about doing something different with them. Um, like perhaps a bit of bead embroidery. Uh, again and I, as you can tell I'm really enjoying my bead embroidery at the moment but I'm just say I'm hinting towards what my ideas would be I'm going you know let's stick some 15 O's around there and let's stick some explosion of something coming out here there you go 15 O's there and a little explosion of <laughs> tassels coming out there <laughs> I don't explain my the ideas in my brain very well so uh, this is where I will be telling you about the bargain that I did. Um, I'm either going to do that now or I'm going to do that in a minute. But um, I'm go I, I wanted to tell you bef before I did the making of the bracelet. So what that is, is we have made an order on the bargain beadbox sister site, beadbox bargains, because it was my birthday and somebody bought me this shipping as a present, which I was eternally grateful for because it meant that I could concentrate on spending that £15 I was saving. And I, you know what I mean, if I put an order in for £45, I got my 35, I got my 30% off then I haven't really because I've just spent that in shipping so I was um, trying to make sure I got myself the best value and I did so we're going to be doing that it's very soon I'm excited for that and now is when we're going to start looking at everything so let's put together our bracelet materials And now we are ready to make our bracelet. So if you 
take a piece of um, cord, I'm using a 1.5mm cord here roughly, or it's, it's probably more like 1mm to be fair, and um, it's a waxed cotton cord. Uh, I'm going to measure it up against a, another bracelet that I know fits my wrist perfectly in a way I like, and that way I can have it fitting exactly the way I like on my wrist. So it, it's going to be a bracelet for me. It's going to fit me perfectly. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up our knot and I'm going to slide it down to the middle of our cord like this. Right, just down to the middle. And then I'm going to take three of our spacers and I'm going to slide them on as well. Take all three of those all the way down to the bottom here and leave yourself a little space because now we are going to make our carved leaf charms to go either side of this pendant and to do that I'm just going to use two flat head pins. Oh, I missed there, did you see that? Yes, I'm going to just use two stainless steel flat head pins to do this. I'm going to thread it on. I'm going to take my flat nose pliers, wherever they've gone, take my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to bend it backwards at a short angle just enough so that it makes a nice curve when we bend it back in with our loop note pliers. And I'm going to cut off to about a centimetre and a half to make that nice loop. Now that we've made our loop it's time to open it and slide it on. Um, you can put that on either the front or the back um, it's not going to matter because you're going to put one on either side anyway to make it so either side your bracelet falls whether your arm is up or down you're going to have a nice look to your bracelet and then just make the other charm and open this charm and put that on the other side where you don't yet have a leaf charm so you have a leaf charm either side of your knot And if I do say so myself, that is looking lovely. I really like that and think it would also look really cute as a necklace, which I might even do, you don't know. But So the rest of it, because I have my design laid out and I know what I want to do, all of this is stringing. So I am going to fast forward through this stringing as it is pretty basic, it is just putting the beads on in the order that you desire. Uh, so I'll meet you back when I've done that. There we are. And once we have finished beading our design or stringing our design, uh, we want to bring in our measurements, whether we're, we're doing it to a measurement or whether we're doing it to an exact other bracelet like I'm doing. You want to bring that in and make sure that you match up. I here don't but I didn't want to use chain. I felt like that was going to be, I don't know, I just, I didn't want to use it. What I decided to use instead were spacers and I decided to keep adding spacers until I had the right amount to make up the rest of the bracelet evenly. I ended up using 10 spacers each side and that was perfect for me. I have said before I have ridiculously like scrawny wrists so um, this might be different for you. You might just have enough to do it maybe, I don't know. But um, they did make quite a difference to, it ended up being about 2 centimetres on each side which made a huge difference. Um, and here I am grabbing some 2 crunch uh, two French crimp beads um, to finish it off and two crimp covers to go around the crimp beads because um, the, the crimp beads that I'm using are a bit too large for my crimpers, my crimping pliers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, thread on my crimp bead and I'm going to pick up one of my tall ends and put that on as well. I need to loop that round. I need to miss the clasp end. You need to be careful and not lift it up too far because you're going to have all your design fall off the end. 
You could do it one t side at a time if you wanted, but um, I'm just going to loop this back through just the crimp bead. Uh, if you really, you should go through two other beads at this stage because I made it quite difficult for myself by going through the two spacer beads after I'd already crimped and cut and all that. It was quite a bit more difficult to do that. So I would suggest going through two spacers or however many spacers you like. You can go down all of them if you like. Um, but you do want to go down something to reinforce that and to make sure your tail isn't too short. Um, so I'm just going to do that and finish that off. Um, I just wanted to let you know that it was suggested to me by one of our lovely viewers, Kim, that um, the crimp and pliers were very useful for crimp covers as well. And I'm telling you, she was right, they were an absolute godsend. Um, it's been so awkward using flat nose pliers and flattening so many of my um, crimp covers. But these, using my crimping pliers was an absolute godsend for this. So I highly recommend that and thank you for the tip, Kim. And there we have it. I'm done. That matches up nicely. I'm going to try it on now. And I always have difficulty showing you how I put it on. I have to bring it closer to my body. So there we are. I'll bring it closer to my body to try it on. And knock you about. <laughs> and there we have it. And that sits exactly where I want it to. Some people might think that would be too tight, but that's perfect for me. I don't like it when it's moving all up and down my wrist and everywhere. I really hate it. I find it really distracting. So I like, it sits very nicely on my wrist. It's very comfortable. It's very smooth. Nothing's catching, nothing's jabbing. Um, and thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this make. I hope I've inspired some people out there. Um, I hope you join me for my future videos. We have a lot of hauls coming up. Um, we have my new beadbox bargains haul. We have an AliExpress haul. And we also have a giveaway to keep adding to until we reach 500 subscribers. So please take care. Join me in the future. Please like and subscribe. Bye. Mm -hmm.